we introduced that the tire road contact forces depend on slip. The longitudinal force Fx depends on the slip ratio kappa, while the lateral force Fy depends on the slip angle alpha. However, the tire behavior also strongly depends on operating conditions, such as vertical load, camber angle, ply steer and conicity, presence of combined slip, road surface condition, temperature, and inflation pressure. Aim of the present lecture is to give an insight about the effect of the above mentioned operating conditions on the tire behavior. The vertical load Fz strongly influences the tangential forces Fx and Fy developed at the tire road interface and therefore the vehicle dynamics. Let's focus the attention on the lateral force and the cornering dynamics. Similar consideration apply to the longitudinal force and the braking or driving dynamics. The lateral force increases with the vertical load. However, this relation is non-linear. In particular, at high values of Fz, the lateral force Fy does not increase as much as the vertical load. This effect is called load sensitivity. The figure clearly depicts this non-linear dependency. The vertical load is increased stepwise of 2.5 kN. Nevertheless, the lateral force does not increase of the same amount, especially at high vertical loads. As a consequence, at a given slip angle, the lateral force stops increasing, even if the vertical load continues to grow, as it is shown in the figure. Thus, the load transfer from the inside to the outside tire during the turning maneuver reduces the total cornering force that the pair of tire of the same axle can develop. The nonlinear trend of the lateral force with the vertical load can be better explained introducing the lateral force coefficient or lateral force friction coefficient mu y, which is obtained by normalizing the lateral force versus slip angle curve with the vertical load. The lateral friction coefficient versus the tire slip angle for increasing vertical load is shown in the figure on the left. It can be clearly seen that the lateral friction coefficient falls off as the load increases. In particular, a linear decreasing trend of the peak friction coefficient, or grip, with the vertical load is experimentally found for most of the tires, as shown in the figure on the right. A lateral force is induced not only by slip angle, but also by camber angle. The camber angle gamma is the inclination of the tilted wheel plane with respect to the perpendicular to the road surface. Camber is positive if the tire leans outward at the top relative to the vehicle, or negative if it leans inward. A cambered rolling tire produces a lateral force in the direction of the tilt, the camber force F gamma. The camber force occurs even if the vehicle is running straight. When this force occurs at zero slip angle, it is referred as camber thrust. A lateral force component due to the camber also occurs at slip angles other than zero. The total lateral force of a camber tire operating at a slip angle is therefore the sum of the cornering force induced by the slip angle and the camber force F gamma. The effect of camber on the lateral force versus slip angle curve is shown in the figure. The camber contribution is larger for small slip angles before the peak lateral force is reached. Then it vanishes for large slip angles. This produces an offset of the curves with respect to the origin. Notice that the camber thrust is generally one-fifth to one-tenth of the value of the cornering force obtained from an equivalent slip angle. The figure shows the dependency of the camber thrust from the camber angle and the vertical load. It is therefore clear that cambering a tire has a large impact on the vehicle dynamics, especially for motorcycles. As a matter of fact, a motorcycle turns because of the camber angle. It must be pointed out that large camber angles promote excessive and uneven wear of the tire. Camber is not the only reason for the offset of the lateral force versus slip angle curve with respect to the origin. Plastier and conicity also offset the curves from the origin. Plastier and conicity 
are connected with the non-symmetry of the tire construction. Polystyra is a deterministic quantity and can be detected early during the tire design. Vice versa, conicity is randomly caused by small variations in manufacturing tolerances. These two possible sources result in markedly different behavior of the tire when, at a zero slip angle, the tire is rolled forward or backward. As shown in the figure, if the tire exhibits play steer, the generated lateral force, FY play, points to the opposite direction when the wheel is rolled forward or backward. This behavior is similar to that of a tire undergoing a slip angle, alpha play. That's why Playsteer is sometimes referred as a pseudo-slip angle. Playsteer causes the so-called dog tracking of a vehicle, which is generally not discernible by the driver. On the other hand, as shown in the figure, if tire shows pure conicity, the lateral force FY cone remains pointing in the same direction when the wheel is rolled forward or backward, as it rolls like a truncated cone. This behavior is similar to that of cumbered tire, which explains the term pseudo-cumber. Conicity is responsible for steering wheel pull, a torque at the end wheel, which is not only annoying, but can fatigue the driver. Notice that, generally, conicity and pre-steer are both present on a tire. Until now, in the discussion of the cornering force of a tire, the effect of the longitudinal force was not considered. However, often lateral and longitudinal forces are present at the same time, such as braking in turn. The presence of the longitudinal force reduces the lateral force which can be generated at a given slip angle, since the viable grip is shared between the longitudinal and lateral forces. The so-called friction ellipse diagram accounts for this concept. The maximum contact force a tire can develop is upper bounded by the product between the peak friction coefficient mu and the vertical load Fz. Therefore, as shown in the animation, when no longitudinal force is applied, the lateral force can reach its maximum value, Fy max equal to mu y max Fz. As a longitudinal force is applied, the lateral force reduces according to the equation of the friction ellipse which is Fy divided by Fy max raised at square plus Fx divided by Fx max raised at square equal to 1. The friction ellipse describes the maximum contact force which can be developed for a given friction coefficient and vertical load. Smaller ellipses can be described inside the friction ellipse. The blue ellipses represent the global contact force at a given slip angle and the four varying slip ratio. The green ellipses represent the global contact force at a given slip ratio for varying slip angle. The friction ellipse diagram highlights that 1. The lateral and longitudinal forces are a function of both the slip ratio and the slip angle. 2. As shown in the figure, for a given slip angle the lateral force is maximum for a zero slip ratio, then reduces with increases amplitude of the slip ratio. 3. Similarly, the longitudinal force is maximum for a zero slip angle, then reduces with increasing amplitude of the slip angle. To better explain this concept, consider a turning maneuver, which imposes a given slip angle and a no slip ratio to the tire, point A. Let's now apply a driving torque. The slip ratio increases and the longitudinal force is developed. Consequently, the lateral force the tire can develop reduces to point B. To restore the value of the lateral force, the tire slip angle must be increased to point C. Clearly, this strongly affects the vehicle turning dynamics, which presents different behavior depending on the front rear driving torque distribution. It must be noted that the frictional ellipse represents an approximation of the real behavior of the tire. The figure represents the experimental data related to a passenger car tire. Asymmetries in the tire behavior can be observed, for example, during driving and braking. As mentioned, the tire road friction coefficient bounds the maximum force a tire can develop, and it strongly depends on the road surface conditions. 
The figure shows the percentage reduction of the friction coefficient with respect to dry asphalt. As it can be seen, the peak friction coefficient or grip reduces of about 10-20% on a wet surface and much farther on snow, about 50-60%, and ice about 80-90%. Notice that road condition not only affects grip, but also the slip at which the peak friction is reached and the nearby curvature. This effect must be accounted for during the design of active control system, such as ABS and ESP. Temperature has a strong impact on the tire behavior. Tire temperature depends on ambient temperature, road surface temperature, and heating, which is mainly produced by energy dissipation due to tire deformation as it passes through the contact patch, the frictional power acting on the tire in the sliding region of the contact patch. Variation in tire temperature affect the rubber compound viscoelastic properties. Specifically, at very low temperature, the rubber is rigid and brittle, glassy state, while at high temperature, it is flexible and elastic rubbery state. Coring stiffness and the grip consequently vary with the temperature. The cornering stiffness generally decreases with increasing tread surface temperature. As shown in the figure, tire grip is instead maximized in a specific temperature operating range, which depends on the transition temperature between glassy and rubbery state of the compound. That's why race vehicle tires must be warmed up and overheating must be avoided. Clearly, changing the rubber compound modifies the tire optimal working range. Summer and all season tires are designed to offer the best performances in terms of grip above a certain ambient temperature of 7 Celsius degrees. Winter tires below 7 Celsius degrees so to remain soft and flexible even at low tread temperatures. To work properly, a tire must be inflated at the recommended pressure. Under inflation or over inflation induce an uneven pressure distribution, which leads to premature and uneven wear. Under inflation heals to excessive wear on the shoulder, overeating, risk of damages and increase the rolling resistance. Overinflation leads to the excessive wear of the center, reduces traction, cornering performance and comfort. Inflation pressure has a strong impact on the cornering behavior. Increasing the inflation pressure has two counteracting effects on the cornering stiffness. First, the contact patch length decreases as the pressure increases, leading to a reduction of C-alpha. Second, the carcass stiffness increases with the inflation pressure, leading to an increase of C alpha. This latter effect is dominant at high loads, resulting in a lower cornering stiffness at low vertical loads and a higher cornering stiffness at high vertical loads when the pressure increases. Instead, no clear trend is shown for the grip, even though an increase is generally expected when lowering the pressure as a result of the increased size of the footprint. The uneven pressure distribution in the contact patch, however, may counteract this effect. Tire road contact forces depend on several operating parameters. In this lecture, we introduce the main dependencies, which can be summarized as follows. A nonlinear relation exists between longitudinal lateral contact forces and the vertical load which is known as load sensitivity. The presence of a longitudinal or lateral force reduces the lateral or longitudinal force, which can be generated at a given slip angle or slip ratio. Camber causes a lateral force developed at the contact patch in the same direction of tilt, even in straight line. This force sums up to the cornering force generated by the slip angle. Inflation pressure, different from the recommended one, heals to premature and uneven wear, a reduction of performance, and risks for safety. Tires present an optimal temperature working range, which varies for different thread compounds, winter, all season, and summer tires. 
road environmental condition, dry, wet, snow or ice, have a large effect on the maximum force that the tire can develop. 